more seats, or also to equal more sales for Ford's clever Grand C-Max compact seven-seater MPV. But there's more to this car than simply extra space. It's claimed to be both more practical and more drivable than Scenic or Zafira class competitors, a package that at last offers its makers the prospect of the class leadership they've enjoyed with larger people carriers. Ford has traditionally been a market leader in seven-seater MPVs, but only when it comes to the bigger ones. Move away from their large Galaxy and S-Max sized people carriers into the volume scenic sized compact mini MPV segment, and the brand has traditionally been less effective. In fact, it took them until 2003 to respond to the Renault Scenic and Vauxhall Zafira models launched five years earlier, and even then, they were only offering buyers five seats at a time when rival brands were giving people seven, a format which now accounts for over 60% of sales in the compact people carrying segment. In the end, it took Ford until the back part of 2010 to bring us uh, a second generation C-Max lineup that caught up by offering buyers not only a five seat C-Max variant, but the seven seat grand C-Max model that we're looking at here. Still, there are advantages to being fashionably late to any party, and Ford's design team have made full use of them. Effective though the current crop of seven-seater compact mini MPVs may be, you wouldn't really finger any of them as being particularly good to drive. Some of them could do with being a bit more practical too, by borrowing features like sliding side doors and easier seat folding mechanisms from larger, more expensive people carriers. Clear opportunities then, for this Grand C-Max to offer growing families a more effective option in a quickly growing market. But will it? Let's find out. Now, one thing that the original C-Max was very good at was rewarding you once you dropped the kids off at school and were taking the twisty way into work. Can a heavier, longer version of the same thing really hope to replicate such agility? Let's see. Um, settle into the raised command bridge driving position with its raised six-speed gear shift and centre console and first portents are good, continuing as the first few miles reveal a car that, thanks to its tortoise chassis and clever control blade rear suspension, manages the difficult trick of being both supple over bumps yet controlled through the bends. It's true that this car's five-seat C-Max sister model is more agile but it isn't by much, perhaps because that car isn't much shorter or, or much less bulky than this one. And both models feature two of the finest examples of Ford's cleverness. The first is an electrically assisted power steering setup through which you can actually feel the road beneath your wheels, a rare thing in an age of PlayStation-like response from systems like these. And the second, uh, well, it's called a torque vectoring control system, something that you'd be more likely to find on a supercar or one of those extreme hot hatches. I won't blind you with the science of how it works. It's enough to know that it'll make the car feel more planted and hug the road as you power through tight corners. True, not something you'd likely notice on the everyday, but for those occasions when you're running late for the school play or you simply want to get home, then you'll notice a difference as the system lightly brushes the inside front wheel with the brakes and transfers more of the power to the wheel on the other side where it's really needed. Neat. Under the bonnet, though, Ford's engineers have developed all manner of high-tech engines for this car, including both conventional and plug-in hybrids, and even an ultra-low emission one-litre three-cylinder petrol EcoBoost unit. Most customers in the mainstream range will be going for a more conventional uh, 1.6-litre power plant. For petrol people, that'll mean either an entry-level 125 PS 1.6, uh, but the better heeled will be well served by going for the much more advanced 1.6 litre EcoBoost petrol unit available with either 150 or 180 PS, with even the lesser powered version capable of getting from rest to 60 in under 10 seconds on the way to a top speed of 126 miles an hour. Most customers though will march past all these power plants with hardly a second glance in their search for a diesel, the volume choice being another 1.6 a TDCI unit offered with either 95 or 115 PS, uh, in which guys you get 285 newton meters of torque, enough for a prodigious braked towing capacity of 1,200 kilograms. 
Um, that's enough to make you question the need for spending more on the uh, bigger capacity 2 litre TDCI diesels that offer either 140 or 163 PS. Now one reason why you might is the entitlement they bring of specifying the optional 6 speed power shift semi-automatic transmission with its clever twin clutch technology that automatically selects the next gear before you've even left the last one. It's a neat looking thing for an MPV anyway, and an important car for Ford since it was the first of their so-called C-segment platform designs, creating underpinnings that will be used by up to nine other models, production of which will top two million cars a year. A bit of pressure then for the Blue Oval to get this right, particularly as this C-Max is the one destined for stateside sale. Though sitting 58 millimetres higher than the 5 c to C-Max model, it's only 140 millimetres longer, which might make you wonder whether it's big enough for larger American families. But bear in mind that this is still a car that's well over 4.5 metres in length. Best to draw back one of the twin sliding doors, neat things, with active stops to stop the door uh, sliding back on you unexpectedly on a slope, and check it out from a seat inside. At first glance, there's the expected 2 plus 3 plus 2 seating layout you'd normally ex expect to find on a compact 7-seater MPV of this sort. But look a little closer and innovation beckons, namely with the seat-eating seat mechanism that you'll find in this middle row, where the admittedly rather narrow centre perch is able to fold into the seat alongside it to create a clear walkway through into the last row. Now, you can also access the third row of chairs more conventionally by uh, tilting and sliding these um, uh, outer seats. But the advantage of using the middle seat removal system is that if you're using, say, these Isofix fastenings on these outer seats for uh, baby seats or boosters, then there's no need to disturb possibly sleeping occupants if you want to get to the third row of seats. Those who do make it to the third row are unlikely to be especially comfortable if they're a basketball playing height or overly familiar with the offerings of Colonel Sanders. These rearmost seats are uh, intended for children or perhaps reasonably agile adults over uh, really short journeys. Um, Ford has provided for them though uh, with lidded uh, storage boxes and cup holders. Now, coop adults up back there for very long and you're probably going to soon start getting complaints about rearward legroom, but at least second row occupants can alleviate their rearward fellow's plight by sliding these middle row seats forwards and backwards. Or, if they're being especially annoying, they might perhaps choose simply to recline them. Uh, at least if you're in the outward rows, you can recline them. If you sat in the middle, another disadvantage of this centre perch is that you have to put up with whatever chair uh, angle setting your right-hand partner has chosen. Uh, both outward seat passengers also get the benefit of these fold-out seat trays. As for luggage space, well, there's really not much point in moaning that there isn't much. As little as 56 litres, in fact, uh, with all seven seats in use, though you do get this uh, helpful underfloor compartment. If that's an issue, then you really should be looking at a larger S-Max or Galaxy-sized MPV from the next class up. No, most C-Max owners will be using the third row seating only occasionally, and when not in use, folding it flat into the floor and freeing up between 439 and 755 litres of space. Uh, that's depending on whether they've specified the space saver rear wheel and whether they're loading up to parcel shelf height or fully upwards towards the roof. Should you wish your C-Max to function as an impromptu removals van, then the second row of seats can be tumbled forward, re releasing up to 1,742 litres of space, and that's not too far off a larger, pricier MPV. At the wheel, where almost everything falls beautifully to hand and feels nice to the touch, Ford has succeeded in achieving designer Martin Smith's goal of creating a premium feel, thanks to expensively slush-moulded soft-touch plastics. Uh, metallic detailing and piano black uh, feel add to the general upmarket uh, look, as does the bespoke Sony-developed infotainment system. 
Now, oddment space is pretty basic on entry-level versions, but high-spec models get a, a bigger version of this center console box and an overhead storage system. List pricing sees Ford Grand C-Max customers pay a £1,500 premium for their seven-seat practicality over pricing for equivalent five-seat C-Max models. Now, that means a pricing bracket which should see most examples of this car sell in the 19 to 24,000 pound area, uh, with the diesels that most will want priced from around the 20,000 pound mark. And rivals? Well, if you're looking at petrol versions, uh, there are entry-level petrol variants of rivals that will save you a bit. Uh, Peugeot's 5008, uh, Vauxhall Zafira and Citroen C4 Grand Picasso, for example. Though the equivalent Renault Grand Cynic actually costs a bit more. But when it comes to the diesels, the uh, Grand C-Max pricing is a bit sharper. Compared to the volume 1.6 TDCI variant, uh, most rivals offer less power and are only a few hundred pounds less. And that's a premium that I think many buyers will gladly pay for this Ford's extra versatility. Whichever version you choose, standard or EcoBoost 1.6 litre petrol or 1.6 or 2 litre TDCI diesel, uh, that's the variant we're looking at here, uh, you should find your Grand C-Max to be decently equipped. Now standard kit across the range runs to air conditioning, alloy wheels, a leather covered steering wheel, rear parking sensors and perhaps the highlight, a good quality six speaker MP3 compatible Sony digital stereo with uh, USB connectivity and voice control, Bluetooth and a DAB digital tuner. Uh, desirable options, well, uh, there's the active park assist system that can help slot you in to the tighter spaces, something that'll be even easier if you also opt for the rear view parking camera. There's also a neat glass panoramic roof. Safety wise, there are twin front side and curtain airbags, uh, stability control and all the usual electronic braking and traction aids. There's also a, an optional blind spot information system that'll stop you inadvertently but dangerously changing lanes in front of other drivers. Now, Ford wouldn't bring a family orientated vehicle like this to market unless it had keenly addressed the issue of running costs. And this Grand C-Max is no exception. Thanks to Ford's Econetic technologies, including Ford Eco Mode and Smart Regenerative Charging, uh, the volume 1.6 litre TDCI diesel model manages to return 57.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and put out a CO2 emissions return of 129 grams per kilometre. Petrol people will be better served by going for the uh, higher tech 150 PS EcoBoost model rather than the entry level 125 PS 1.6, provided that they can stomach the extra upfront asking price. This more modern unit does, after all, return the same 159 grams per kilometer CO2 return and a slightly better combined cycle uh, reading of 41.5 miles to the gallon. Impressive enough for you to mistake this petrol variant for a diesel, in which case you'll be glad of the Easy Fuel Miss Fuel prevention device, there to stop you making an expensive mistake at the filling station. On the ABI 1 to 50 grouping scale, this Grand C Max is up to five points better than its old C Max predecessor, uh, with even the top of the line 2 litre TDCI model uh, rated at Group uh, 20E thanks to its Thatcham Category 1 alarm. Uh, the thorny issue of residual value should exceed most expectations too, with independent experts reckoning that this car will uh, achieve values around 15% better than the previous C-Max over one year or 20,000 miles, and up to 10% better over the more usual three year or 60,000 mile reading uh, when compared to the old version. And this car is eco-friendly too, with uh, more than 300 parts uh, of it uh, constructed from recycled materials. It was clear what the Ford C-Max needed to make it really big in the compact MPV sector, seven seats. With that oversight rectified, this Grand C-Max model now looks to offer a very complete proposition indeed. The family buyers it's targeting are a demanding bunch, but the good looks, spacious cabin and eye-opening versatility it offers seem certain to convince a fair number of them. That all of this has been delivered without compromising the drivability that marked out this car's predecessor is truly impressive. Because let's be clear about this, 
This car dynamically is streets ahead of the opposition. It's true that it isn't especially inexpensive and that the entry level petrol unit could be stronger, but that apart, this is a remarkably complete package. One that Ford may have taken its time in delivering, but one that's been well worth the wait.